Welcome to another highly questionable work week. Who's that guy, Poppy? Who's next to you right there? Jorge Sedano. Uh, hey. George, for you Americanos. Si. What do you like on the show, uh, show today, George? Uh, I get to work with the star of the network, of course. Oh, and, and you too. Right. Of um, but of course, Aaron Rodgers coming back and the rest of the NFL basically potentially soiling themselves yes. at the possibility of him coming back. That's talking my language. Dale, Poppy. Gandigo's wagon roll on without Carson Wentz. This was a big injury yesterday. As big as we've seen in the sport, Aaron Rodgers is the other one. This team has been playing very well, can beat anyone. And then on this play here, and it's said to be on the plant, not the hit, although I never want him running this way. He's going to keep getting hurt if that's how he keeps going into the end zone. An awful hit. And I'm telling you, George, if I'm the Eagles, I call Tony Romo. I don't try and win with Nick Foles. Tony Romo can take a couple of games to get ready for you. These next couple of games do not matter. That team is tailor-made for him. That offensive line can protect him. That is the guy that I would go after, and I'd do it very quickly. Yeah, look, I'm with you on Romo, but the question is, do I think the wagon will roll on? If it's Nick Foles, I'm with you. No, because Nick Foles is the perfect guy to catch off guard, right, for a game while he gets in the middle of a game. But if you have to game plan against Nick Foles, look, uh, it's been a long way since 2013 when Chip Kelly was running stuff we had never seen before. That's not who this guy is now. So I would say... The answer is no. And even with Romo, a better shot, I still don't think they're better than the other We'd teams. We'd all rather see it with Romo, though. Admit that. The only sure. question to me would be, if that phone call gets made to Romo, can he go from Dallas to Philadelphia? Can he see himself winning a Super Bowl in an Eagles uniform? Yeah, I don't think they'll allow them to do that. Jerry Jones would be like, I'll take your, that's right. your jersey off that, the, the rafters or wherever the hell I put it. That's right. I will. Take it right down. Yeah. Can I say something to the Philly fans? Go ahead, puppy. Hey, listen, don't feel too bad. You know, Carson Wentz got hurt, but at least you all and didn't get hurt. Ha, 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 ha. I was only kidding. He got hurt f three minutes after the other That's guy right. Carson That's Wentz That's right. Got That's hurt. how that happened. It was three minutes of joy you had there. Such Philly things happen. I mean, it's happen. not really joy. It was yeah. just three minutes of it. It wasn't they're both hurt. Yeah. Did the NFL fail Tom Savage? Just question a joke. Did you guys not see the video? <laughs> this person looked like he was having a football of science, of the Texans, of the coaches, of anybody who cares about human beings. Well, look, I came prepared to the show today, Dan, and I spoke to Mort today, and he told me the story, which was this, that, you know, technically, it may not be the NFL's fault. The ref did his job. He told them to get out of the game, and then there's a neurosurgeon who's independent of the NFL that's supposed to observe him. But prior to observing him, he's supposed to see the same replay that millions of other people saw. And apparently he didn't. And had he had he done that, had he seen that, he would have gone straight to the locker room. And there's very little chance Tom Savage would have been back in the game had he been back in the locker room. So technically, not the NFL's fault. And that's fine. That's a technical glitch. But where we are in this country right now with the science and with this sport, if the people at home can see something that your neurosurgeon cannot, you have a problem on your hands, and that falls at the feet of everyone in football. Hard to argue with that. Where the Seahawks, poor sports and how they handled their loss to the Jaguars. Oh my God, they were such great poor sports. Dirty and foul and angry. And the end of this game was something out of the apocalypse. It <laughs> felt like Fury Road the end of this game. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Look at all this video footage that we have for you. Of, this is Michael Bennett being dirty at the end of the game. And these guys were upset. We played some audio last week from Jalen Ramsey getting this ratcheted up because Jacksonville doesn't think of that as a champion and that champion demands to be respected as a champion and they lost and look at all this fun penalty flags falling out of the sky and that isn't even the best stuff the best stuff came after that when people started throwing things at members of the Seahawks and they're not ever gonna have that yeah Quentin Jefferson got stuff thrown on him then he tried to get into the stands uh, the answer to this is yes but it's absolutely okay that they're that they're the new Raiders right they're the swashbuckling pirates uh, of the NFL right now and the funny part about all this is that Bennett after the game, who, by the way, is also a nominee for NFL Man of the Year, I might add. Uh, after the game, he chose not to discuss any of it. He didn't feel like he needed to talk about it. Last year, when Jake Matthews of Atlanta did the same thing to him, he called him a bleepity bleepity bleep. There's some irony in that, and I love the fact that there's irony there, because that's what makes them great. Well, maybe the Seahawks are your style. Or been in Jacksonville so long. Oh, that's you know? true. I mean, that That'll make anybody you know? upset. Oh, right. Man, that I've done that to baggage handlers at the airport <laughs> when my flights are delayed. <laughs> Should Aaron Rodgers rush back now that the Packers are seven and six? 
rush back. Do you have any idea how lonely I've been for weeks and weeks? This has not been any kind of rush. December 17th has been circled on my calendar since this guy went down with a collarbone injury. They barely kept it afloat. They kept it at seven and six, revealing to all of us that Green Bay is surrounding him with an army of schlubs who can't win unless he's there. He needs to get back for me, if nothing else. Yeah, Mike McCarthy and Ted Thompson need him back too, though, because as you pointed out so astutely, uh, they haven't necessarily done a great job of surrounding him with great talent, as we've seen. Though, he's as good a coach as he is a player right now. Did you see what he did with Brent Hundley at the end of that game where Brent Hundley was going to spike the ball? And all of a sudden, he told him, no, back shoulder, back shoulder. And he made Brent Hundley look like a capable quarterback there. This guy's so magical, we need him back in the worst way possible. And get this, Dan, if they win out, they have a 91% chance of making the playoffs. So give me that kind of chance to get him in, and all of a sudden, everyone's fearful, I'm in. But here's the thing, though. Because these people have betrayed him for so long in Green Bay, he's made all of them look so much better than they have actually been around him, and he's going to rescue this bunch, too, probably save some jobs. He needs in that spot to look at Hundley and give him the wrong advice. <laughs> so they fire all those people here, and he has no reason to come back this season. Funny story. Jared Payton and Clinton Portis both played on those University of Miami teams that were really great and won championships. Jared Payton once told me a story that Clinton Portis in practice because he didn't want Jared Payton to take his time and his carries, told him to run the wrong route. He did, and all of a sudden, Clinton Portis remained the starter. That's what you gotta do. Throw it to one of their guys! Hunley, that's the strategy! They'll, they'll never expect it! Wait a second, let me get this straight. So Hunley keeps their playoff uh, hope alive. Right. He wins two in a row, that's and right. all of a sudden, he gotta go to the bench to make room for this guy, Darren Rogers. This joker! Know? That's right, because it's just a pretty boy that has a little bit of a, of a problem with his collarbone. Uh, he couldn't <laughs> play with the collarbone, you know, because it was broken. Yeah. Come on, give me a break, yeah, buddy. Right. Yeah, that was just, you know, uh, this is football, this is a man's sport, buddy. You're supposed to, you're supposed to play no matter what. Coming up next on Highly Questionable. This part's not fun. This is no good. We, we frown upon this. Yes. Guys calling for a teammate. Frown, frown. Hold on. Let me frown for a sufficient amount of time before Keep I Keep frowning. Laugh. All right. I will frown. I'm still frowning. When am I allowed to laugh? When am I allowed to laugh? Not yet. Still frowning. Hold on a second. I will keep frowning. Come on, Dan. I'm I know. They're making Don't got all day. Now I can laugh. There look at we all go. the ice on his face. Yes. Yes. Look at the ice. Look at him. It's glorious. Does it look like he had fun? My Souls TV show is brought to you by the Mini Countryman. Get more of what matters. And Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Real Coca-Cola taste. Thunder Pacers at 7. Hornets Rockets at 9.30. Wednesday on ESPN. Time for more headlines. Is the wafer straight a little bit fishy? A little bit fishy. A little bit fishy. Okay, those nostrils are snorting in right now. They smell something that's a <laughs> lot fishy, and I think they blew something on George's nice jacket, which is unpleasant. Welcome to the show, George. Happy to have you here. Giancarlo Stanton being traded away to the Yankees is great for baseball and terrible again for the Marlins. We were told that this would stop happening when they got their stadium, that the Marlins wouldn't be this betraying entity that is filled with circus clowns, always betraying the city of South Florida, and this is worse than ever. Twice the Marlins have had the best right-handed power hitter in the game and twice they have traded him. Miguel Cabrera first and now this guy. It's an embarrassment that baseball allows this to keep happening. I thought Derek Jeter retired from the Yankees. It does seem like he's still part of the organization here with this trade. And here's the other thing. He is doing unprecedented things, Dan, so you got to give him credit for that. He may be wildly unpopular trading arguably the best player in the history of the franchise, but at least he's making his mark somehow. But last thing, Collusion. Look up the definition. That's what this looks like. Yes, that's what it feels like. Can I say something to Derek Jeter? You're going to say whether I give you permission or not. Well, this guy's a big carpet bagger. You know, he's a big oh. snake. That's what he is. You know, I mean, oh. he, sold, uh, he sold Major League Baseball coming down here and buying this team. And the first thing that he knows is he strips the team down. Right. You know, Lurie had the team at the $120 million. Now he's looking at maybe a payroll of about $45 million. You know what I mean? That's not nice. You know, he that's goes around nice. with a big smile in his face. You know? nice. I hope, I hope nice. that he's he, not nice. uh, his boss will be the only one watching yeah. those games at Mania Stadiums. You know? Two seats filled, that's it. Nobody All else right. will watch. Uh, and I uh, hope they boycott the team uh, and they don't watch anything. Whoa. You know? No too many, okay. no nothing. Very that's aggressive. what they deserve. That's right. Very aggressive. We are fast approaching A Rod being more popular than Jeter. Oh, we're there. Oh, that's that right. Happen? That's How did that happen? <laughs>
I love that you said two fans there, that you were shaking a fist saying two you fans, will have two, two fans, fans, which means That's the right. other 21 are definitely not going to go anymore. They're not going to go, they're, they're anymore. Gonna go anymore. anymore. The other 21. Peter and his psychic, Cheater, whatever the guy. Whoever the psychic is. is. The guy's name. What's the other carpenter? Sherman. Sherman. What's the guy's name? Sherman. Sherman. That's That's guy. Sherman. Sherman. That guy yeah. Sherman who's no hiding idea. behind Jeter. Yeah. yeah. Was it Bill's called Snow Game Entertaining? Oh, you know the best way to watch this? The way we're about to show it to you right now. Because yesterday, you'd have to watch the entire game. That's no fun. But if we just give you the best stuff from the game, that's the way to watch that game. So here they come, running out of the tunnel. They're all fired up. They have no idea yeah. what they're in for. They think they're going to be able to run in that stuff. Look, they're, they're like north of the wall right now. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't practice for this. All of their game time preparation, meaningless. Where all are the wildlings? Where are they at? Yeah, what else we got Dan here? Dan has no idea what I'm talking no about. No idea. Give yeah. me some more. Give game me some of more. Thrones, Dan. Give me some more. Oh, this is the winning is touchdown the run. Here we go. The only exciting play in the game right it's there. So slow. So slow. <laughs> slow NFL football. Have you ever wondered to yourself what that would look like? Not snow, slow. Yes. Incredible. And snow. That looks fun. Yeah. Now let's show people the parts that might not be fun because this one of those moments where he'll tell his grandkids about. And you know what? This is a real thing, Dan. Snow games, people are into them. People watch them. People watch Army Navy at a clip that oh. they hadn't seen in almost oh. 25 years. Oh. So you know what? Snow, it's oh. all good. People oh. love it. Our government needs to spend more money on military football. That game is terrible. God bless the troops. <laughs> yes, God bless the troops, yes. Don't blame Peter, man. He thought that he was in the end zone, that he had scored a touchdown. <laughs> he, he didn't know. Right? I didn't he know the difference. Uh, he, that, that was yes. awfully overzealous yes. for the two yards in the yes. middle of the field that yes. he got. You guys didn't even show the best video. Oh, look out, George. Watch out. This one. Yes, this is game preparation right here. Fat guys moving so. Yes, they put the foot in football right here. Look at this. So much football going on right here. You're going to start practicing this stuff. Belichick's already been practicing since he saw this. Time out. Oh, wait, any more. Yes. Scurry back over there to clean it wait, up. Wait, who are all these other people? Uh, who are all they? Wait a minute. They're down one. Get out of here, people. Who are you? Who are you, helpers? Get out of here, nefarious helpers. And then here's Vinatieri. He's 400 years old. He doesn't need this. Brittle bones, all very cold. I think he's going to make it. Oh, you do? I think yes. he's going to miss. New York Law. My Souls TV show is brought to you by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Time to play the game that we thought Derek Jeter was a liability in the field. Do you question? You give us the topics and events, and we question them. Do you question touchdown shades? Touchdown shades. This brings us to Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon somehow, after being high, after being out of the sport, kicked out of the sport multiple times, the best athlete on the field in this Green Bay Cleveland game, and he scores a touchdown, and the Browns all celebrate this way now. Well, they don't celebrate very much. So. No, they don't. You gotta be able to enjoy it when you can. Yeah, there it is. The touchdown shades. If you're two and 38 in the last 40 games, you probably shouldn't be wearing those. If you're someone who spent many off season actually hiding his eyes because you didn't want to see the coaches see what you were smoking, that's probably not a good idea. Well, the internet is not a kind place, and that's basically where everyone went yesterday. Which is, yeah, they don't want Goodell to see your bloodshot eyes. But you know what? To me, I love it. You know what? Make it stand out and. You know what? He's also kind of distinguishing himself from, I'm the star here, I'm really good, these guys are bums. I uh, I thought that was a fresh joke. I didn't realize I was coming with a stale joke that everybody was already making yeah, on you're the not that, you're I'm not sorry. that smart. I'm sorry, I'm getting old. Yeah. Did you see what Gordon said on Twitter? Oh, this is good no. right here. Demarius Randall. Look at the bottom of your screen. How well did Demarius Randall cover Josh Gordon? And he had one catch, Randall said. Any more questions? Well, Flash Gordon's got some questions, it looks like. Great win for them, but let's be serious. Considering several of our disadvantages <laughs> as a team, uh, the kid couldn't hold my jockstrap on my worst day. He managed to take out the Browns worse than he did the kid. See, I told you, he's wearing the glasses. He's like, I'm the star, they're bums. I'm right. Yep. <laughs> Do you question if this is good entertainment? Oh, we've got a pop-up shop involving LeVar Ball. And it's a very expensive and orchestrated marketing strategy. When I say pop-up, he just pops up with t-shirts. And that's the entertainment. What do we have here? Entrepreneur. Uh-oh. Does that? Oh, careful, careful. 
yes, this is absolutely what should be happening outside of Big Baller Brand, wherever it's selling anything. This is exactly what should be happening. Is this metaphorical? <laughs> what is that? That right there on the oh. floor is Lonzo's shooting percentage. Yeah, pretty much. And it's free throw percentage and every other percentage. <laughs> Well, you know, if you ever get those uh, sneakers, you know, from him, that's something that you could do. <laughs> I'm, go I'm going to. On NBA TV, Pelicans and Rockets. Oh, yeah, the Rockets, the rare, quiet 20 and 4. You don't get a lot of those. They're 20 and 4 this season, but let's check in with Boogie Cousins. He's not behaving the way he did against Zach Randolph the other day, where he just sort of took it. Here, he doesn't like that he's called for a foul there. And yeah. he's the most entertaining guy in the entire sport. I mean, he may not be the best, but he's definitely the most entertaining. What oh, you grab this shorts? What are you, what are you, what are you complaining about? Uh, I, he's just still frustrated because Zach Randolph wasn't having any of that. Uh, uh, Sonano, are you intrigued? Uh, yes, see, see, I'm intrigued, of course, because the Rockets are the best team in the sport right now. They're all obviously also the most fascinating team because I don't know if Chris Paul and James Harden work yet because they're better when each other's off the floor. So there's that. There's anything boogie I'm in. So see. Papi, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Are you kidding me? You know, my sources told me that LeBron is already making phone calls, you know? Oh. The moment he leaves uh, Cleveland at the end of this season, he's trying to get to the Rockets, buddy. He's trying to get to the Rockets because they think that they can compete in the West, you know? I'm telling you, Chris Paul, LeBron James, and uh, the running beer, you know, that's a hell of a one, two, three punch. My father's sources are the USA Today that he found by the toilet. That's true. Yes, that is exactly what it is. On ABC, The Bachelor, Countdown to Ari. Go ahead, just throw Who's Ari? the video. Just go, I'm man. just, no, just I don't even know. I don't know Ari. Bachelor Ari? This Ari. Feels like it's been forever. It kind of has. So get to know him by watching his entire Bachelorette journey on the ABC app. From the first one-on-one. -on -one, Where did you come from? To the blindsiding breakup. It was going to be me and you, and I don't know anymore. Now. Get revved up for his new start at love. <laughs> Binge Ari's season of The Bachelorette on the app, then catch the new season of The Bachelor this January on ABC. George, are right. you intrigued? I, I'm switching. I'm switching. I was originally going no because I don't care about The Bachelor, but I saw Ari cry and fake laugh in that promo, so I'm in. I'm in. Fake laugh and cry. You got me hooked, Ari. Poppy, what about you? Are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. But listen, I got to get the ABC app in my phone, you know, because oh, I love this show. I live for this show. The Bachelor, are you kidding me? You know, brings tears to my eyes every time I watch it. <laughs> you know you what I mean? Ari, apparently, yes. What are you talking yes. about? <laughs> That's all the time we have today. Thank you for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. Hasta luego. Okay. Right, cool. No! My guy, my guy, my guy, my guy. <laughs> <laughs>